So as Felipe said, I'm Caitlin Chusey, the Director of Biomimicry. I bring the perspective of nature to the table and get a front row seat as it inspires engineers, physicists, chemists, and designers like yourselves to ask new questions and arrive at more sustainable designs. If this presentation spurs questions for you, please do drop uh, your questions into the chat and we can discuss them at the end. I'm excited to share some of my what my team is working on and show how you too can use nature as a model to make design choices that will be essential to restoring, renewing, and revitalizing the planet. So we have this saying on our team, no dumb walls. How can every piece and part of what we're designing provide positive value? That's a regenerative mindset. As a sneak preview, let's talk about regenerative agriculture. So over the past few years, the agricultural industry has paved the way for regenerative systems thinking. By rebuilding soil and restoring its biodiversity, farmers around the globe are driving mutual value for the planet as they produce the crops that are needed for human nourishment. These same principles can be applied to any business or design challenge. To start, I'm going to kick us off with a 60 second video that highlights what this approach has meant for my team. you take a few steps and immediately you'll observe something that is a little strange or you've never seen before. And you're gonna ask the question, why is it that way? How is it this way? I'm an engineer, so I look at the world very much from an engineering hardscape physics mechanical standpoint. Blending of two disciplines, it really is amazing what you can learn when you open up your mind and think about it. It's about looking realistically at your business, at your products, at your impact on the ecosystem and saying, what role do I play in this? How am I part of this? None of us are separate from the system. And that means that all of us have to be part of the solution. So with the built environment, it's pretty easy to see the impact that human engineered buildings have in the natural world. In this graphic, you can see how industrialization of the land near the Atlanta airport has completely transformed the landscape. What was once a lush green forest is now a hardscaped airport surrounded by other industrial businesses. You can see this last remaining parcel of forest in this area. This is the business as usual approach to design. And unfortunately, the current data center industry is no different. Data centers have a very direct and visible footprint on our planet. The design decisions data center engineers make impact land, water, biodiversity, air quality, and many other ecosystem services. But not all of us work on data centers. If you're working on a cloud product, designing a website, or creating the next Xbox game, the connection might be less obvious. So for those designing digital products and services, it can be easy to forget that the cloud is hardwired to the planet through our data centers. Every page load, every picture, every post, every PowerPoint saved to the cloud creates more demand for our data centers. And that demand is increasing at a breakneck pace. We're all connected to the system. And even if it's less obvious in some of our roles, we're all connected in some way back to the planet. The technology we create connects back to nature. So how does biomimicry create opportunities to marry technology with nature? Well, creating technology is natural and humans aren't the only species on the planet to create it. Birds build elaborate nests to protect their young using only readily available and sustainable materials. Termites construct complex mounds with built-in passive cooling systems. And ants domesticated mushrooms and started farming 50 million years ago without any fertilizers or pesticides. So then why do human created technologies feel unnatural? The human engineered technologies we create feel very different from the natural world because we focus almost entirely on human needs while excluding the rest of nature from the design table. Human centered design is no secret to folks in the design community like you. Life-centered design, however, takes similar concepts a step further by making nature an equal stakeholder. 
And what better way to learn from nature and how to design from nature than from nature itself? This is the practice of biomimicry. The ultimate goal of biomimicry is to build technology and design solutions there that are a regenerative partner with nature. By design, regenerative technology restores and enhances the resiliency of the natural world around us. So take this beaver dam on the right, for example. In constructing the dam for itself, the beaver enriches the habitat around it, creating opportunities and value for woodland creatures that share this environment. Biomimetic technologies strive to do the same. When we think about whole system regenerative design, this is what we mean. So how do we get there? How do we start building regenerative systems? Well, we use the living world all around us as a model, as a measure, and as a mentor. Nature has 3.8 billion years of R&D experience designing thriving regenerative ecosystems. That's what biomimicry is all about, taking inspiration from what nature has already learned and translating it into designs that can create healthy functioning ecosystems. Like the beaver, every organism has something to teach us about fitting into the world. Every organism plays a role, big or small, in making up the world we see around us. So, <laughs> before I go any further, let me get clear about what biomimicry is not. Biomimicry isn't about simply copying the look of something from nature. As clever and admittedly hilarious as this squirrel cheek design is, it in no way contributes to a regenerative system. And looking kind of like a tree doesn't make this cell tower work any better. And the, this terrifying spy plane, uh, I think we can all agree that it doesn't even look like an owl and didn't get that part right. So if biomimicry isn't just about looks, then what is it? So as I said, biomimicry is about translating nature's best designs into innovative solutions. Let me share an example. The transparency of glass makes it an ideal material for windows. However, this quality makes it a hazard for local birds. Every year, about 1 billion birds in the United States die from collisions with windows. So how might we design a window that maintains their desired transparency for humans while being visible to birds? As it turns out, spiders solved this problem over 50 million years ago. Spiders don't want birds colliding with their webs because they're too large to be caught and they damage the web. So what's the solution? Well, spiders incorporate UV reflective silk strands into their webs to make them visible to birds so they can avoid them. Ornilux's bird-friendly glass took inspiration from spider webs to incorporate reflective UV light. Birds see the web pattern on the right and avoid the windows. All we see is clear glass. So this, this is really, really cool, but this is a point solution. What about the rest of the building? What about the structural materials, the concrete? What about the manufacturing process and the construction process? The glass in this building is just one element within a complex system that needs to transform from the ground up. So what does a complex adaptive system look like? Well, in nature, every piece and part plays into the larger regenerative system. For example, these trees go about their lives transforming light energy from the sun into carbohydrates they can use for energy. All the while, they sequester carbon from the atmosphere, they filter particulates from the air, and they improve soil quality. Those are generous, beneficial byproducts of their existence. Additionally, the trees provide shelter and habitat for a variety of squirrels, butterflies, birds, and moths. The moths become food for the bats and also find shelter in the trees. The moths help to pollinate the oaks, whose acorns become winter stores for the squirrels. Every actor within this complex web plays multiple roles over time, creating mutual benefit across the system. So if your website or app or device, product or service is one of these trees, what are all of the first, second, and third level connections in your system? What small changes could you make that create new value within the system for unexpected beneficiaries? It might seem like a daunting task to start reimagining the entire system you work within. I get it. 
But fortunately, there's already a cheat sheet in biomimicry that you can use as a guide. Life's principles are the underlying patterns all life uses to thrive and build resilience. Every organism on Earth uses these principles on multiple levels in everything they do. These can be used to test ideas, spur innovation, as a, and as guiding principles in design thinking processes. So to give you an example, let me dig in on how my team uses these principles to create the regenerative data center of the future. Microsoft builds data centers all over the world to meet customer needs and respond to demand. That means our designs are standardized and intended to scale. But Microsoft also has a goal to preserve and protect ecosystems for the local community and the environment. To meet those goals, and because of those life's principles I showed you, we started asking questions like, what does it take for a data center to be life-centric and regenerative? This life-centric way of thinking led us to ask, what matters to this place specifically? And which stakeholders do we need to take into consideration? First, it was obvious that we needed to connect with the local community and ask what they were looking for in a data center that lives in their backyard. But again, because biomimicry is life-centric, not just human-centric, we also investigated what matters to the local ecosystem. In this way, our definition of stakeholder began to shift. So like usability testing in UX, we actually looked for ways to measure how well the data center works within the ecosystem. Instead of looking at things like discoverability and comprehension, we looked at ecosystem performance issues like water quantity and quality control, air, carbon, and climate, soil health, human health and well being, and biodiversity. These findings are now helping to inform data center construction in North Holland, which is part of Microsoft's Amsterdam data center region. It might seem like our impact is small and only on our data center land, but like the beaver I mentioned earlier, our impact goes much further. By planting native vegetation that is appropriate for this habitat, we can actually support pollinators for up to 15 kilometers around the data center. Currently, my team is actively prototyping how more of the data center can contribute back to nature. What if the cooling system, for example, wasn't just for cooling, but also provided positive benefits like capturing rainwater or actively countering urban heat island effect? I'm so passionate about biomimicry because I've found no other discipline that provides a roadmap to bridge where we are with where we want to be. So if this is something that you're interested in too, here are some ways to get started. First, I highly recommend reading Microsoft's Green Design Principles. They're a fantastic guide that tells you how to take steps today to improve the sustainability of your designs. Second, dig into life's principles and start to think about how they can positively impact the ecosystem that you're part of. And finally, if you have any questions, if you wanna brainstorm, or if you're curious to hear some really cool facts about animal superpowers, give me a shout. Let's talk. Thank you.